Okay, it's a good morning folks. It's a Saturday morning for Fully Charged Live and we're on our way to the event, bright and early. Uh, I'm riding with the lovely Lynn. She's part of the Renault Zoe Owners Club here in the UK. I think the largest owners club in Europe, if I'm not mistaken. So we're going to go in her 40 kilowatt hour Zoe. Uh, first time riding in that, so uh, we'll have a nice ride. And it's a lovely car and it'll be a lovely day. We'll get back to you soon. Fully Charged Live was an original event. It was actually the first of its kind related to electric vehicles and the industry around that. It was a conference and show held in, um, at, actually in England at the Silverstone Raceway. And in fact, it was ironic that there was actually racing going on while we were there looking at EVs and all the stuff. Uh, but still, you know, over 6,000 people came out to learn all about this mysterious world of electric vehicles and its supporting ecosystem. Now there are over 50 vehicles on display at this event and a lot of them you could climb around in so I actually got there a bit early and had a chance to look around before really a lot of the crowds came in. Uh, so here's some images from that. The Twizy drew a decent crowd. There was a couple of them floating around at uh, some different stands. A pretty unique vehicle. There were several manufacturers at the event, including Nissan, Renault, and Tesla. Yeah, Tesla actually had a booth at this event. Also got to see Nissan's ENV200 light commercial vehicle that was available. It's uh, got the 40 kilowatt hour battery pack with active cooling. So it, uh, it's great for short haul commercial uh, applications. Another interesting technology was the uh, urban deployment of light stands that actually have chargers built into them. Uh, great that London's starting to roll these out and we're seeing more and more as we've uh, reported on. Hey, look at that. There's a Tesla that I can afford. Now the parking for the event was a little farther away than the actual building and because of a racetrack format you couldn't walk over there so they had a couple of buses but actually uh, they, there was a call out to a lot of EV owners to come and help shuttle people back and forth from the parking lot to the main grandstand area. Well sure enough uh, there were a lot of Teslas and Renault Zoe's that showed up courtesy of their respective clubs the uh, Tesla Owners Club of the UK and as well as the Rezo Renault Zoe Owners Club of Europe showed up. There were uh, I think about 80 vehicles that came to help shuttle people back and forth. Throughout the two days there were various lectures and uh, talks that occurred and as you can see by these photos they were very very well attended. All right I'm here with Julian from Oscar and Hamish and they make some really cool accessories for Tesla and other cars. I think you're going to be right. making some stuff yep. for the Jaguar. Yep. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what you make? Yeah, it's sure. pretty cool stuff. Well I, um, I had this idea for doing a kind of tailored fit luggage for the front of the Tesla mm -hmm. because it was something that I wanted to do having had a, a road trip with the kids. Everything was piled at the bottom of the staircase before we left, and there was no way we could really fit it all in the car. So it was just chaos. It was like Tetris with your, with your Tesla. Yep. So I thought, why not, a bit like a pannier on the back of a motorbike, why not make something which is tailored exactly for the geometry, the perfect fit, so you can pack it in the house, you just pick it up and drop it straight in the car. Mm -hmm. So that's exactly what I, what I did, and, um, and we've made uh, versions for Model X, Model S, and then today I'm showing you actually get the first look at the Model 3 version. Yeah, get the first look at accessories yeah. for Model 3. So let's see what Julian's talking yeah. about over here. So walk us through it. Yeah, yeah. so let's start, we'll start with the Model S. Yeah. So this is Model S facelift D. So pre-facelift had, had a much deeper front in the section, but the front geometry of all of the Tesla Model S has got the same shape. So this has got three pieces. It's got one piece which is tailored to fit across this shape. So that's a good size for kind of wine bottles or, or, or water bottles. And then there's the main middle section, which is, which is actually quite a big storage unit. Um, and then when that strap's adjusted, then you can, you know, it's a good size to kind of carry. So you could, that, could be in a, that could be in a trolley, or you could go you know, to the mall and stuff with that, and then pop that straight in the car. So, so if, I take, if I take them all out, you look at the size of the space you've got available. So that's where a normal ice would have its engine, obviously. But most of your viewers will know that. So that's how they fit in. So, 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 so also we do the Model X version yep. of the luggage. So there are four pieces in there. So there's this piece, left and right sides of the pocket. And then Model X gets these two big square sections. 
they go like this, like that. So Model X, you can see the size of Model X front in comparison. Yeah. This is just how they're flat packed for, for delivery. But they open up, yeah. So for both Model X and Model S we do a rear trunk set and the trunk of the back goes under the coffee floor. So these are the kind of more like sports bag gym sections that go in the back. This one is the got the carbon accent on the top. And then if you have a pop around this side, you have that down here. So Model S, all Model S have got two pockets at the back. So when the floor's flat, I always found things fall off into this pocket. Yes. I either put my, in the UK we have the Chapman adapter for the, for the 50 kilowatt oh, chargers. Kits. Yeah, safety kits. Uh -huh. And, but in this one it's got the uh, acoustic packs, it's got the bass speaker in, so it's only got uh -huh. one pocket. Yep. So we make these things called trunk pockets. Oh wow. Uh, this happens to be a red one because the guy who commissioned this was a fan of Arsenal Football yep. Club. Um, so this comes in black with carbon uh, or Nappa or plastic tops. And that fits a Chatham adapter, Type 2 cable. Uh, charging whatever accessories, yeah. any windshield fluid, whatever you want. Yeah. Effectively, that extends the usable floor space in the back of the car as well. Absolutely. So we do, um, so we do that little set for Model S in all the different finishes. We also do the Model X, yep. and they're much bigger cube bags. I was for, yeah, I was fortunate to meet uh, uh, Yu when he yes. brought his Model S over, a uh, Model uh, Three. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Model. Is a, is a smaller, rounder front. So these are the two geometries that fit in Model 3. So they are, it's it's like a little kind of love heart shape. So these two pieces are designed so you can have them, so they, they fit flat on the floor. So they can be small, sorry, small bags. They, they have a, a grab handle on top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These are the, the proto sections. Yeah, they can work as a shoulder bag like that. It's a bit turtle shell like, which is quite nice. Or also you can have it more like a more like a cycle carrier bag. For the Model 3, those are available now? These are going on pre order from, from this next week. Pre order, okay. Um, so we probably start the show. Start the show. Welcome, thank you. Thank All right, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>
that was on display. And also the Renault uh, Kangoo, a pretty neat looking vehicle again. Uh, too bad we don't have some of these in North America. Uh, there's some pretty fun stuff out there, but here's one that looks like it's for more work type environments. Many clubs and associations were represented. Of course, there's a European uh, version of electric vehicle type uh, organizations. And of course, the Tesla Owners Club of the United Kingdom was well represented, as I mentioned earlier, in some of the ferrying of passengers back and forth, but also here on display, talking to interested people. It was interesting that there were some rally versions of electrified vehicles, including uh, this one of a rally Renault Zoe. Pretty cool stuff. I love it when people take the initiative. Here, uh, an owner had purchased a stock Nissan ENV 200 van and totally renovated it to convert it into a camper application with pop-up roof, uh, sleeping quarters, uh, kitchenette, the works. Uh, really nice to see the the level of detail that this owner went through it's a one-of-a-kind vehicle right now and uh, just shows that what you can do with uh, electric vehicles well i have to admit one of the reasons i really wanted to go to this show was to see the new jaguar up uh, ipace up close um, trevor and i actually saw one at the uh, canadian international auto show here in toronto uh, back in february but it was uh, roped off and kind of up on a stand as you saw i think from our report from one of our shows so um, we really couldn't you know look into it too closely well here they had a pre-production model that people could climb around in and push buttons and all that kind of stuff couldn't drive it around uh, it was disabled from driving from that perspective and i believe that the um, the uh, L, uh, uh, controls were all in a demo type of mode, but uh, here through my video and pictures you can see some really good detail on the new I-Pace uh, from a seating configuration perspective and a size perspective. Um, this color was a was, uh, really pop-out color. Um, it's one of their, um, I think, pre-order production colors that you can get if you pre-order the vehicles. It's called Photon Red. Um, but as you can see, uh, just from these pictures, hopefully you can make out some of the, the detailing in the interior. Um, and the, the, the design language that's in, involved here. Um, Jaguar is known for really, really well-appointed vehicles and really well-done fit and trim um, for all their vehicles. Uh, so, I mean, they are playing in that luxury space, so you would not think anything less of uh, Jaguar. But um, uh, the next video coming up is me talking a little bit more about it and showing you some more, some more film from inside. So I'm inside the, uh, the all-new Jaguar I-Pace here at Silverstone for the fully charged event. And this is the first time we're able to get some access to the inside and we will get some, uh, some access in Canada probably in the fall. But as you can see, it's well appointed, um, you know, very comfortable seats. Um, good amount of storage, the fit and finish, the stitching. Um, and this is what I'm told is not a full production vehicle. This is uh, close to full production. It's going to be a static use vehicle. It has done some demo miles, about 800 miles already. Um, so I think that the information center is probably in a demo loop at this point. It's not fully fully vetted. Um, but you know, comfortable position, nice airy uh, full glass ceiling. There's no pillars in the middle or no uh, cross beams. Uh, fit and finish. It looks like it's got an Alcantara type of suede material for the liner here. Black, which is uh, nice to see. Uh, but yeah, the fit and finish on this almost full production model is uh, is pretty cool. So hopefully uh, this is coming out pretty nice on camera. Very nice. That's good. Yeah. Some more interior shots of the I-Pace again to the front dash. Um, and some views of the rear seat. I'm, I'm about 5'6", five, 5'7", five, so you can see there's lots of leg room there. You've got some controls in the back for power plugins and AC and uh, probably entertainment as well. Um, there's a little bit of a hump in the middle, um, but not as predominant as some other vehicles. Here's a great view of that all glass roof, which is pretty unique for a Jaguar. It doesn't have any cross members uh, halfway or three quarters of the way through the roof. It's entire sheet of glass from front to back, then there's the rear lights above the, the rear seat passengers. Uh, nice fit and finish on the, on the materials, as you can see, the leather, and the armrest, um, well thought out, well nice, really nice.
there was an area outside where they had a lot of the different electrified vehicles that are available for sale in Europe and specifically the UK that people could uh, you know, climb around, look at, poke, prod, all that good stuff. And uh, you'll recognize a lot of the models, including uh, Europe's Renault Zoe, one of their best-selling models to date. And look, there's a Hyundai Ioniq. Uh, they're pretty rare, so go grab that one quick. Here's another model that's specific to Europe that we don't have in North America, the Volkswagen E-Up, a subcompact electrified uh, car. Uh, pretty popular, actually. Volkswagen is going to be, a, uh, looks like they're continuing to produce these as opposed to the uh, Volkswagen E-Golf that we've talked about on many segments and you've heard about. Uh, so these are, I believe, are still being produced right now by VW until the ID series come out. But uh, again, another nice uh, compact electrified vehicle. I was fortunate enough to be able to meet uh, Robert Wellen and have a good conversation with him about the event. He was just blown away by the attendance and uh, overjoyed with uh, everybody coming out and was thankful that I came all the way from Canada. And also had a chance to meet co-host Johnny Smith, really nice guy, and I'm not sure where my eyes are closed. Should have taken another photo. And a very humbling experience, of course, was meeting a lot of fans that came up to say hi. I was just... Uh, totally uh, just not prepared for that. I was very grateful. Here's Aaron. He's the first non-Tesla owner uh, reservation holder for a Model 3 in the UK. And this gentleman uh, wanted me to sign his Model 3. Thank you, Nodi. He's got a lot of YouTubers that have signed that, and I was just, again, honored to be able to sign it. And it was a joy networking with fellow EV YouTubers uh, that some of you have seen on a previous episode. We've got... Uh, James and Kate on the left, of course, with uh, uh, Nikki from Transport Evolved and uh, John Porterfield, who's with EcoCars. On the Saturday evening, we all went out for a nice uh, Chinese buffet dinner, and uh, it was about 57 people that came out for this, a lot more than expected. And here's a nice picture with James and Kate again and myself at the uh, restaurant. And the Twizy was a good draw. EcoCars had one with John and uh, James, so I wanted to get a quick picture with that. And it was my esteemed pleasure to meet Eleanor, uh, YouTube's Elle's Electric Dream. Um, she has a Leaf, a Gen 1 Leaf owner, came all the way down from Dundee, Scotland. And my thanks to Nicholas, a.k.a. EV Nick, for all his help. Uh, I gave him a box of Canadian maple cookies, which I understand he devoured almost immediately. And here are the Leaf Brothers, uh, a.k.a. the Three Amigos. We've got Aaron Russell for YouTube's Aaron Russell, a first-time electric vehicle owner, first-time car owner in a 2018 Nissan Leaf. And then, of course, on the right side of the picture is James, a.k.a. a Lemon Tea Leaf. Uh, he's been doing a lot of stuff with his new 2018 Leaf, uh, same color as the one that I purchased. Uh, in fact, he was my inspiration for the color. Um, he's, James is really good at monitoring battery usage and reporting a lot of different uh, technical facets of the Leaf. And my hat's off to both of these guys for providing the content they do. So near the end of the event, we decided to do a live stream for Q&A. It took us a couple of tries to technically get it going, but we did. So if you look under the James and Kate YouTube channel, you'll see episode three of the fully charged live live stream Q&A. That's the best one. Uh, but this is a picture from that live stream just before we, we went live with it. Um, some notables in there. We've got, of course, Nikki from Transport Evolved. We've got uh, Chris from EV uh, Ventures, if you plug adventures. Uh, Beth Lilly, who's uh, the coolest lady I've ever met, uh, races EVs and involved in that whole scene of, uh, of performance electrified vehicles, just awesome. And then the gentleman with the RZOC shirt is Craig. He's the head of the Renault Zoe Owners Club in uh, Europe, in the UK. It's actually uh, Europe's biggest free owners club, electrified vehicles owners club uh, in the nation. Craig was just outstanding in helping me with some logistics and uh, settlement of a place to stay for a bit and uh, rides and all that kind of stuff. He was just outstanding. So, and he, him and his team came and volunteered, shuttling people around, uh, as I mentioned earlier. So, a big thank you to Craig and your and the team, and, and of course everybody, all the YouTube uh, people over there again for being uh, very, very uh, welcoming me, and I had just a great time. Mm -hmm. 